Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Threadlings a Filmmaking Production Diary. I am your host, Miguel Ortega, and this is Tran Ma. Hey everyone. How's everybody doing? Um, so, what are we doing? So we're, we're showing the, the weekly progress of an animated film made in Unreal Engine. Um, this week... What are we doing? We are doing separate things. So I'm working on this um, castle for the moths that they all live in, like their hive. And Tran is um, working on this hallway that looks really awesome. So what I'm doing at the moment is just I am um, kind of laying out how I kind of want the terrain to be. I'll bring this into mud box, but then I can bring in this uh, displacement map into Gaia and kind of use it to lay out what this terrain should look like. I'm still not, so it's supposed to look lumpy and crappy here. And then you would bring this into Gaia and kind of use that as a starting point. So right now I'm just starting to lay everything out into Unreal. So the lighting is not correct or anything, but you could start getting an idea of what um, it's all going to look like. So a few of the things that I want to change here is um for one um it's not supposed to be floating so there's going to be some like um roots uh coming down and uh holding it it does look kind of cool <laughs> that it's floating yeah it's kind of like yeah th there is something kind of cool about that right there is something kind of like it's just like fuck it it just flies <laughs> i do kind of like that um added a lot more like hanging vines to it and i did uh change the silhouette a little bit up on the top but uh it's pretty cool and i'm using this program called uh, or this plugin called um ultra dynamic sky so much easier to use than the built-in um sky system so you can see if i just come over here i could really quickly just start um changing the look of this um you know, the issue that, that we have with Unreal is like, when we look at this stuff, we're like, oh my God, this would be so easy to light in V-Ray and you would know exactly what you're going to get in here. You, you never get what you think you're going to get. So uh, it's weird, you know? Um, so a lot of those fog cards are fake. So you can see that they, they don't look great once it gets really dark because they're basically just glowing. Um, but we have all kinds of controls here so we come over here to our dynamic sky we could uh increase uh let's go over here and uh so like our cloud coverage weird so you can see now, now uh, i could increase the, the cloud coverage and um you can control how much fog you want so you can make a totally clear day you can um it's like a does it have a weather system too it totally has a weather system it's pretty cool so if i go into my blueprints um you have ultra dynamic weather. So let me just throw that in there. So we have rain and it has um, a component that you have to add into your shaders that will allow you to give it like a wetness. Um, so you can see you could add that rain in there. And uh, if you want to, like you could bring up the fog here so you can make it like crazy foggy you can it's kind of tough to see it like that though obviously that's way too foggy but we have a couple questions or comments that we have one uh very beautiful and detailed thank you and is using unreal engine as a platform from animating or animating been better than rendering everything inside 3d program like maya uh well, in terms of rendering time, that's no, there's no question yeah. <laughs> about that part. 
like uh, getting some, rendering something in V-Ray, I, I think even Unreal would tell you it's going to look better. There's just no question about it. It's, it's yeah, it, it is what it is. It's, I, I don't even think Unreal would, 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 would pretend otherwise. There's no comparison. The difference, though, is in Unreal, a render could take you six hours a frame, whereas here you're getting 60 frames a second. Oh, you mean in, in V-Ray? In, in V-Ray. What did I say in Unreal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, I mean, rendering this in V-Ray would be so much better. It would be so, so much better. But it's going to take forever. And then you render this in Unreal, and it's 60 frames a second. So, even Unreal would say, there's no question, V-Ray is at, better. At the moment, yeah. I do think, like, there's certain things, like, um, like just looking at Unreal... Um, that it looks like it's just going to continue look getting better and better. Like they are investing yeah. um, a lot of time and energy and resources to continually improving the software, and that's something to always consider um, when you want to use something. Like uh, there has been software that we've used; it has only ever existed as one version, <laughs> and it's never really improved uh, after that. After so. That. You know, just looking at the future path of it, it's going to continue to get better. So we do find it like um, a very good investment in our time just to really learn the software because uh, we know it's going to get better. Yeah. So we have a cool settings here. Like, um, where did that go? The thing that's annoying is when I click on it, it uh, selects it. But um, you could see you could... So rain, we already saw. We could bring up the rain. Um, but what's cool is you have, like, dust, right? So it behaves differently than fog, and you can see you could bring that in and get your Blade Runner uh, 2049 look. If you, you have know. a comment, uh, Ultra Dynamic Sky renders so well path tracing, especially weather. We haven't tried it. You know yeah. what? I'm going to try it now. Um, let's see if it all blows up in my face. <laughs> it might blow up in my face, so let's see. I think you have to turn on something for Path Tracer, though. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know because I haven't used that, but I assumed... Like how most things are, there needs to be some kind of adjustment. So adjust for path tracer. So that's weird. It uh, okay. So it's doing something. So let's see what it does. But uh, it looks very weird so far with path tracer. I feel like um, just turning on path tracer never really worked. Like, if you've been doing, like, um, a lot of work in Newman, and then you just turn it on, it, it will just look, like, really messed up. You know, there's something really cool about it just being completely freaking moody like that with just a couple of lights poking through the, the, the hive. Um, but anyway, that's your, that's your dust. Um, the material wetness is not going to work but there's a slider for that, and that would be what controls um, all the materials through this slider here. But you have to you have to go into all the materials and add that uh, in there. So there's also materials dust co uh, coverage, which is cool. So the rain we already saw, um, snow particles. Let's see what else is here. So just a lot of cool stuff. There is lightning, um, which I have in there. Let's see. Yeah, you can see it back there. It's subtle, but it's back there. There you go. So in the back there. So just uh, right now, I'm not getting too caught up in the lighting. I just really need to just populate this thing uh, I probably want to put like a moat around this thing so um, that's what I'm 
going to start working on right now is just getting that moat to feel good. Um, let's get in there and let's just take a look. There's one thing about Unreal that drives me freaking nuts. It is the navigation. My goodness. The pivot. What is going on here? Look, it just doesn't let me zoom in for some reason. It's, it does. It wants me to use the scroll wheel. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, but, yeah. So I'm not sure why, but you could get you could kind of get a better view of it there i have a question um, looks great are you using custom fog cards uh i'm using the ultra dynamic sky uh ultra dynamic uh, no it's not it's easy fog is what it's called so but you can see if you get in there there is a lot of detail. And this is not, so none of this is textured. What's kind of cool is like, if you go to unlit, everything is essentially just white right now. So it's only gonna look better once we, we actually texture this thing. So, um, Yeah, that's an easy fog tie. It only went, renders well on high resolution screen share. Oh, you mean the, the movie render queue? Okay. I mean the path tracer, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, so that's what I've been working on. So now I wanna get this ground here, like I said, to have more of a moat. So I'm just gonna go do that real quick. So I, I, I have, um, file I just have to uh, get going with it so let's minimize this Yeah, I we know that you can you can focus in on stuff in, in Unreal by pressing F, but it still it still has in my opinion poor navigation. <laughs> yeah, we know <laughs> we know the F thing by now, trust me, we already made a whole film in here. <laughs> but it's still uh it's still not good despite that. I think it's just always been that way and and most people use like um like the keyboard, like they're playing video games as if they're playing games to like move around. But for us, it's like, for me, I, I don't play, I don't really play games. <laughs> so, all right, so let's see. So I got to get this hole in here. So you could see originally it was there and then something happened and just kind of got lost. So I just want to push that a little bit further. Uh, let's see. So is that the terrain that you made in the, the background? That's the foreground terrain and the background. Okay. So that, oh, okay, it's the floor too. Yeah. So I'm just going to pin this. Just give it. So let's want to pin this. I'm just drawing the shape of it. So I do want it to be bigger. That way I could have um, some light in there. This is way too strong. So I'm gonna go to my uh, look devs and see. 
try Shatter instead of Carver. So this hole appears way too big. You know, what could be cool is putting thorns all in this area, like just like a big thorn field, but um, that's still way too big. So let's go into this mask. We'll go to edit mask and we'll subtract. much smaller. So what I could do is I could pin this here, then go back to the mask and uh, just start subtracting from it. That's better. We'll bring up the power, which is basically like a blur. So that's better. Let's unpin this. Uh, let's go to the wizard here. And let's set this to So that's just eating away way too much. We could play with the seed. Um, is what we're doing right now fall under environment artist task? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, very easily. Uh, Bobby, what's up? Uh, well, I, I do have bookmarks in the sense that in Unreal, I, I already have keyframes. So if I just move my timeline, it'll just snap right back to where I want. I don't really need to be zoomed in like this. I was just, just to show you guys. But uh, I rather just have the keyframe in my timeline and then just snap if I want to go back. And that's how I would do it in Maya. So, okay. So. So if I use the regular erosion, I get this. If I use shatter, I get this. Don't like either one of them. So let's see if I use the carver. Combine clamp output. Make sure you turn off your clamp outputs um, or else you get that. So Carver, let's uh, displace it more. Uh, so that's that. We'll plug that into the wizard. You've the wizard, the wizard is basically just an erosion. Um, wizard, what? What trend? Well, where, where is the? Did you when you made this? Did you plan where like the castle is going to be? Is that what that mask was? Yeah. So like that red dot is um uh, was like the placement, and then you were doing all the terrain around it. Yeah, but I I just hate the way this looks in general. To be totally honest, I, I think I'm just gonna start from from nothing. So 
Uh, so let's just start with like the bad land so it looks more messed up looking. Bad land looks like what? Like bad lands. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just going to copy this mask since I already have it. Copy this and paste it over here. And that mask is where, um, that dot is where you're applying the castle to be. Yeah, so I could just set that to subtract, and there you go. You immediately have your hole where you want. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll pin this so that I could make any kind of changes if I want to push this in. Probably want to push it in deeper, turn off clamp output so you can see it goes deeper in there. If not, you're going to get it to kind of fill up. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to play with the scale here. Oh. So I think it might be better to do something like this. See, it gives very different results. <laughs> Just be careful when you scroll through the seeds because if you found one you liked and you jump through it too quickly. There's, there's not an undo. Uh, I don't know if the undo works for a seed if you're just scrolling through it. Normally it doesn't. All right, so we have that. Um, okay. So one of the worries I have with this is it already feel like it's up against the wall. So I think. find something a little bit flatter. I think that's kind of what I wanted. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I could, if I don't like this mask, I could always go to the primitives and grab um, the crater. Let's unpin this. Set this to a single. That's good. So something like that. I could then grab this. Uh, put a transform on this. So say, OK, I'm going to move that crater. Uh, let's set this to add. So I could pin this now. And now put this into position. Okay, so let's put this a little bit larger. All right, so we have that. Let's grab some mountains. So we'll unpin this. So I'll, I usually turn them on to bulky so that they're 
chunky mountains like this. Um, that program looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. I should flip the order here. So this guy gets put in, let's put a transform. We'll set this to add. We'll pin this. Bring down the scale. I kind of like like this um, the, the badland terrain is like looks really evil. <laughs> it looks more evil like this. Yeah. So I'm gonna put another mountain in there, but first I just want to throw in shatter just to see what that does. Some of these nodes require you to um, constantly update them, so I always turn on the auto update, which is the little lock here. So that's that. Let's throw in Carver. Carver like accentuates some of the cavities. It sometimes looks great, sometimes looks terrible. So I liked it more before, but we can increase the displacement amount. Uh, some nice kind of like detail. I, I like it more before though. Okay, so we have this, so let's take a look. So I just think we need another smaller mountain here. So what I'll probably do is just grab these guys and paste them. So we just have the same mountain again. And I'll just change the seed. So there you go. We have a completely different mountain. Very simple. Drag this into that. And now it automatically creates... Um, Combine, let's pin this here. So that's cool. Um, so there's our shatter. Let's unpin this here. Let's come over here. And now we could go into our erosions. We could also add like sand if we wanted to. So for the sand stuff, I'll sometimes do um, the snow and you could just use that and that that tends to, to be fine. So. It's going to look like snow here, but you can see it, it'll fill it in. I think I do want the sharpness, though, so I think I'm going to get rid of that, but I just wanted to show. Um, okay, so we'll put... Um, surface, which is going to give us smaller little details. And now we could start bringing this up to higher resolutions. So we could start seeing what it looks like. Let's save this. Let's 
So you can see on the right, you're seeing the actual map has a lot of resolution, a lot of detail. So let's go back to 3D view. So I like to change the lighting to get closer to what probably it's going to have, which will be like a backlit. So pretty cool. So what I want now is just more cracks in here. So what I'll probably do, I'll move this over here. Um, I'm going to create a mask. Now there's a few things I could do. I can go under rivers. And plug this in. And this does tend to basically find where would the, the water naturally go, which would always be like the lower areas. Uh, and if you bring up the down, bring up the down cutting, you can see it's going to start cutting these cracks into it. The problem is I don't necessarily want it in all the areas that it's uh, choosing for me. So I, I might have to mask certain things out. So we have something like that, but you can see I don't want that area over there. So let's mask that area away. So we'll pin this here. We'll go to edit mask. I just don't want this area affected at all. It's nice that you can just paint that out. Yeah, I have to invert it though. And there you go. So now it's cutting into that. We can increase the width. Could increase the depth. We'll turn off render water. That way it doesn't show the blue, but it's still showing it, so I'm not sure why. Um, but you can see we're getting those cracks in there, which is what we want. Plug that into our shatter. Let's come over here and pin this. So getting a lot more detail. And then we can try the erosion. I kind of like that it's uh, so just kind of sharp and nasty. Uh, so let's unpin this. Pin just means that it locks the, the preview to whatever node you're selecting. So it's like in Nuke, it's like pressing 1. So that's giving it a little bit of erosion. I, I think it's good. It kind of ties it in. Uh, looks good. Yeah, it looks very cool. Let's uh, let's look at this crumble node here. So let's do that one. that or do I not like that? I guess I like it. So I just put that into the erosion. So my only worry is that this here may block the, the hole from the front view. 
I still want this to be deeper. So let's see where we lost that. So that's pretty deep. That's pretty good. So right before I put the erosion in there, what I'm probably going to do is just grab that mask again, which was a crater. Well, let me just let me just make it a mask at this point. Do that. Cause that just to subtract. So it's going to make that hole much deeper. Okay. And I think that's probably going to be good. What I like is that all this here looks like rocks kind of breaking out, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to save this. It is cool. It, it's very different than the one you have in the scene right now, right? It's flatter, which I actually think might work for it. I think so, too. So... I mean, this is flat. There's more. The thing is, I could still use this one, right? I could still just throw this in the background. Yeah, it's like mountains. Yeah. I do kind of like it floating. What do you think about the, the thing floating? I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense, but neither do moths uh, attacking cloth people, so... Um, that's true so I'm going to throw in the mesher here the mesher I'm going to basically select my poly count so 10 million faces alright that sounds about right 10 million faces so that's like 6 mil I could probably go higher than that I'm going to go to 15 million faces um, scale, I'm going to go to one unit equals one meter. It's probably going to be, I'm going to have to rescale that no matter what, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to set my path here. Howdy, Nolman. Uh, I'm trying to figure out Houdini to do this type of work. Have you do, done anything with it? No, I have not. Um, I think Houdini is amazing, but um, I don't. I don't use it. So I wish I I knew it, but at this point, uh, I'll do that in my future life. Cause <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just learning new things is like it can be very time consuming. Hard uh, drive is full. Yeah. Also, our goal is um, not to learn new things, but to get like this short film done. Yeah. So we just use whatever <laughs> that we can use, because um, you can just really go down. Like, wait, what the hell just happened to my scene? You can go down this hole where you just spend like six months learning, and you don't like do anything else. Uh, my scene my hard is kind of is vanished. Full. I'm gonna use that on my next. <laughs> yeah, my hard drive is full. Yeah, mine too. You gotta tell your boss that whenever they're like, "We need you to do this." Uh, my hard drive's full. My hard drive's full. Unfortunately. Sorry. All right, so let's set the path. So floor, I call this Badlands. Oh, I forget, this is just the, the folder. So the name will be that, da, 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 da. The path. 
poly count. What the hell happened? It just completely got rid of my mesher node. That's so odd. Ah, so weird. So let's go to 10 million polygons. Um, this one, I don't know. So let's call this flat. Don't want this. I'm going to call this Well, uh, well Miguel is he working on that right now? I guess maybe I can share my screen. Um but it can be like an icon maybe. But what I'm doing um so, oops, I didn't mean to take your screen. Well, you actually, you can if you want, because I'm about to write this out, and this is going to take a while. So, so do it. So, what I'm doing is stuff in Marvelous, still. <laughs> um, uh, so, this is Marvelous. I'm looking at this, uh, this piece of geometry. Um, this is just a poly model. And... I am trying to put some fabric on it. So the process, and I've, I've gone over it a couple times, um, is you have to draw like these lines, I guess, and they're like, it's a really finicky tool um, that can just like kind of drive you crazy, to be honest. Like I, like this line here has like this weird, like zigzag, uh, this is a, uh, this sucks. <laughs> That's the best way I could put it. Um, it's a tedious process. Um, so when I draw these lines like this, what line that goes all the way down and um, that tells me like, okay, I can make it fabric there. So now I can highlight that shape and then get, um, a piece of cloth. Uh, the trick is like when you're drawing the lines, the tool is really like the tool needs needs to be reworked. It needs to be upgraded. Like I will say, it's really difficult to use. Um, you do have to click your point all the way until like the end of the edge, and that's actually kind of hard. So it like sometimes doesn't do that, and so if you kind of miss it by like a tiny tiny bit, uh, you won't be able to highlight the shape. So, in theory, this could be done, like, 10 times faster if this tool was, like, just improved a little bit. Uh, and then the other thing is that it's just a difficult, it's actually really difficult to pivot. So, um, this tool is not made to be, like, for buildings. So, that's not their, their, their fault. It's just me trying to do something that it's not made to do. Um, and... It's really made for like people around at most six feet tall. And so it's designed, for example, like if, if I brought this character in who's about life size, he's like in the real world units, he's five feet. Um, in our world, he's like six inches or something like that. Um, but they're built to be like much more life size. So pivoting around it is pretty easy. They're built to be life size to simplify things like simulations. Yeah, because it won't sim well if it's like six inches. Um, but in Marvelous, pivoting around something like this is pretty easy. But as soon as you get something that is like much taller and a lot higher, uh, you use a pivot and it just goes, whoa, and then <laughs> you're just going all over the place. And so that's part of the, the, the reason why it's like just um, taking me longer. Um, I have finally completed this wall I have uh, the other half hidden. So this is a hallway where a lot of our stuff will take place. Um, this is 
the kind of the practice hall, I call it classroom. We don't have like a formal, a formal name. It's like the lecture hall. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it's a lecture hall of some sort. Um, that's the building, and then there's supposed to exit and then go into this, um, which kind of has like a different style. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> this one's much more art nouveau, and this one is not. <laughs> Um, the reason why it was kind of switched out was that this is not very modular. So if I just hide these guys. And this doesn't have um, the cloth on it, but this was the building originally, um, the practice hall. And this opening is just, I just have a wall hidden, but this is kind of the structure. And there is cloth on these. Um, if you're just following the stream today, there there was a whole reason why it looks like this, and then it looks like all kinds of ways. Um, so we're just trying to figure out this whole aesthetic um, pretty much every week on the stream. So you'll see us like, like I don't know why it looks like that. But in, in any case, if you just joining in, uh, this was the previous environment we built. Uh, it looked like it was missing something, so we so we went in and said, OK, let's cover this in cloth. Um, and we did. And it looks cool. Now the other thing to think about was like, well, we want to build more of the environments. And although this room is cool, it's not very modular at all because just the shape, right? Like it's really hard to like try to reuse this wall shape somehow. <laughs> so to make something more modular, it's um, a lot easier if everything is just kind of straight. Right, so like what I mean by straight is like that wall is flat and it doesn't curve like the way this one is really dome shaped. Um, this is just a more difficult piece to build. And then what I've done is just um, try to plan this very modular as possible. So like this would be like one asset piece, one section, right? And then you can see that's just duplicated um, over and over down the hall. And then we, you're getting inside. I don't know how this is streaming. Is it really slow? Sorry. No, it's streaming fine. Streaming pretty good. Um, you can see like the ceiling. Let's hide. The ceiling's cool. It has a lot of detail in it. Um, normally, like I've done ceiling work, and it just takes so long. Like if you ever look at really old uh, buildings, like these are some of the references that I have. The most like amazing detail is like above your head. Um, I don't know. That doesn't really work well for most, probably most movies because people don't walk in the ceilings and there's not like a billion ceiling shots. Um, ours does. But ours will because our character, Mayo, um, who's like the guy, the little guy in orange, uh, he walks in walls. So we'll get some pain. And off. ceilings. Yeah. Like walls and ceilings. He walks whatever, wherever he wants. So we should get some like, benefit this time around i hide this half so you can see this exposed um and then what i've done is at least planning wise like you know that was that basic structure so you can see like you know i don't have this group very cleanly um this would be our basic wall or column like our frame and then uh within there you can put like different wall sections so this is like an inset wall Right, just there's no windows, and instead of making it flat, Miguel was like, "Why don't you put the inset?" And I was like, "Okay," and then I did, and it looks cool, but it does take time. Um, the one thing we are trying to do, because in terms of like when you think about scale, um, this is caught naked, so he looks really weird, but it gives me a sense of scale. You can see how large his piece is, so you do need a lot of texture resolution. And it has to be painted. We can't just put tileable uh, textures on it because there's a lot of like stitching on the edges, um, which are really nice and super cool. And I'll pull up some stuff in a moment. Um, but this will take up a lot of UV space. So we do not, we are not shoving all the UVs into one 4K map. They do have multiple UDIMs. And uh, we'll have one side texture. And the other side, which is flipped, so this side has a negative. Um, flip on it. You want to know if that's all geo. Yes, it's all geo. Yeah, it's all geometry. You can see that these UVs are backwards. So they will share UVs. 
uh, just have different shaders. Um, because most likely, normally what happens when you have flipped UVs, not flipped normals, um, your height will go in wrong direction. So like if you have a map that is supposed to be raised, if your UVs are flipped, it's going to look like instead of that area being raised, it's going to be punched in, um, which can be fixed really easy in material. So that's how this is being um, dealt with, just to try to save time. So it is, in this work, also um, extremely planned. I do have probably cleaned up this one, this one piece, which is super fun. Um, and then here, I finally finished these windows. You know, it's in total insanity. <laughs> what? The this, this scene is complete, absolute madness. Yeah, it's madness. So it's just, like, Miguel and I talked about, like, can we get someone to help us build this? And, I was, and we were like, no. <laughs> so there's a couple of reasons why. Um, th I don't have any design done. Like, I just look at this, and I go, oh, that's cool. Uh, uh, what, what if that was quilted? Yeah, and that's it, right? But, you know, I don't copy it one-to-one -one because um, because you can't really copy it one-to-one, -one and some things don't really quite work quite the same, right? Like, if I look at this thin area, like, you know, it's kind of hard to quilt something this thin, so that's we're, we're probably not going to do that. And it's just a loose interpretation. Um, I tried to keep... I didn't use, like these cone structures so if you look at these cones and when i was analyzing this maybe it doesn't even matter <laughs> at least like this was my thought process and maybe i'm so wrong um which totally happens all the time but just to explain like i thought okay so our main room is like super art nouveau how do i try to maintain some of that and if you look at the ceil the ceiling structure it basically is like a fan and each one of these um, it's just repetition. So they're actually not like so hard to make d digitally because if it's a perfect circle, you're just duplicating um, this kind of like fan or finger shapes uh, across the whole thing. So I decided, well, if I do too much of that, it's going to look too different from the Art Nouveau. And so this one looks like this. But ultimately at the end, it still looks like... <laughs> it looks more like um looks psychotic yeah it looks more like this still so i don't know i just maybe created more work for myself but i think it's, it looks incredible the windows are fine and complete i was like these can't take that long they're they're just i just need to put a great right this is going to be faster than like um this guy so let's look at this one get inside so you know you can see this is like very, very honeycomb. And I don't know. I don't know what you think, Miguel. Like this is like very um, more honeycomb, more Art Nouveau type of windows. And they do have stained glass. And we wanted these windows to be more simple. So I just put like this great. And these will not have stained glass. Yeah, that's great. I don't know if they clash or mishmash. It's too late. It's fine. It's, it's like fine. A, it's they just changed their mind as they were building. This, this no, this 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 colony's been around forever, and then they were inspired by the French and created the lecture hall, and then this is when they were more in, inspired by the British. <laughs> <laughs> they just were like, "Well, we went through time," and I don't know. Yeah, why um, not? Yeah. So let's see. Uh, some comments. It looks amazing. Can't wait to see Unreal. Me too. Um, the quilted look gives it medical and alien ship nostril. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does have like this. Um, this yeah, we've alien. talked about how it has an alien vibe. Even yeah, it it's just, it's just cloth. It has an alien vibe, but okay. So these windows ended up taking more time than I thought because I had to build stylistically. Um, it didn't make sense just to build like just to put like a grate over everything, you know, just on the whole thing, it would have looked, um, I don't know, weird. Like that looks weird. You know what I mean? Do you agree with that? That looks weird. Yeah. So I was like, okay, so let's just build like this frame because I kind of see it here. 
I do sigh. I go, dang, I'd do more work. Um, sorry, I'm dig digging for my reference. It's gr uh, my reference. It's definitely growing. But if you look at these windows, they kind of have like this um, this trim going around it, and I was like, ah, I don't want. You know, this makes it way harder, <laughs> but it looks way better. So I was like, okay, let's just do it. Uh, but you can see it wasn't just one window. So there's a couple of variations. There's this variation, this one here, um, and then this one here, and then this one, and this round one. And this one's all completely unique. That's um, incredible. It's, it's a lot of work. So, you know, I, I also got some of these. And I realized, like, even in the real thing, it's not really perfect. If you look at this, this pattern is like weird. Like it's all like crooked in this in this flower. I don't know if it was a repair. Or they're just like, oh, that's just how it is. Um, like if you do that in CG, you kind of like, it kind of doesn't work. Um, and also, the more work I do put into this kind of like window lattice, I call it lattice. Maybe it's a frame. I don't know what the technical proper term is. But the more work you actually put into model, the easier it is to actually just texture it. Yeah. So if if I put less work and I didn't model this as well and then just left it like that and go, oh, we'll, we'll just figure out texturing, it's much harder. So you, you just pay the price um, at some point anyway. And usually it's worse to pay the price later. There's always a price to pay if you cut a corner. I've always learned that. I still try to cut corners, even though I know it. <laughs> um, but whenever I cut a corner, I always really, really regret it. So that's just built out properly. Um, and then this is just a wall variation. So this is not really technically our layout. Um, normally, like, if you look at these halls, and you can see, like, OK, this is like a window wall section. So it's based on this one, very, very obviously. Um, it would just replicate across down the whole entire hall. Um, what I'm building are just supposed to be modular pieces. Uh, this one I showed, um, I don't think I completed it. No, I didn't complete it. I completed it this week. So you guys saw like some basic block out shapes, um, which I basically start like this. So it starts with like these um, rough poly models. And then I bring them to marvelous. And this one's like finally complete. And it is the most detailed one. So the door. Yeah. So if you get really close, you're just like, eh, I can get really close here. Now for this one, I could, had to bring it in at a really large size. So Marvelous has a, a limit on the resolution and it's based on the scale of the object. So if you brought in something like where's caught, and this is really important. I tell like the students this all the time and they don't listen to this, it's going to screw you over so much. Um, so I re repeat this like a broken record. Um, because it's better to annoy somebody than to have them go through this whole thing. <laughs> and then it comes out wrong. But you can see the scale here. And then you can see like how these are really small. Um, if you bring in Cot, and I, he was the wrong scale, and he was like this big, um, there's only, a, a, again, a density limit. If, if it's like this much, as, as much as can be like in terms of density and polygons, it cannot subdivide any higher than that. That is just all you can get from that software. So I could not get this level of detail at this scale. So I had to bring this in, um, scaled like three times more. So it was really big. And of course it's more problematic for me to work on because I can't pivot at all on any of this stuff. So this one ended up being um, quite time consuming, but it's um, worth it because we tend to, one thing we know about ourselves is we tend to have shots with doors in all our work. There's always a door. So this is probably going to end up having some kind of close up. I am missing a door handle. I'll just probably like build something in and just, just shove it in. Um, and it did take some more extra work uh, because we had to make sure that this door was not in, in a pen training. So there's a lot of like, uh, yeah. So you're going, you were actually moving that on a verti or vertice level. Yes, yeah, so I, I had to change it in Maya, but you can see that this door and this frame do not collide. 
and it's just that type of work. If I built that, I would totally have all kinds of hidden stuff in there. Well, the door is going to, the door has to move. No, I mean like bad words or something. Like oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like how some of those uh, buildings in, um, when they restored certain churches, they, they put xenomorphs in the, in, the, in the churches. Have you seen that in New York? <laughs> It, it was either New York or, or it was the, the Notre Dame. It's one of, one of the others, but they restored some of the churches and they re, had to re, uh, restore the gargoyles and someone went in and put uh, xenomorphs in there. <laughs> okay, that, that's kind of funny, but it's probably, it's definitely not funny if you're, you're the one working on it. Uh, but yeah, so that's that door. This one, um, this is not cloth. I don't know what the material should be. It would either be wood or like some kind of, um, based on actually like the literal door, which looks like um, it looks like some kind of metal with some kind of patina on it. Um, maybe we'll we'll do something like that. I do feel like whenever I touch something touch something metal in substance, it doesn't look as nice um, in Unreal quite yet. So I know that that's probably fixed in like the substrate stuff, but. Um, we're, we're going to keep it as basic as we can because we're already getting complicated. Now, this is this area is the big, um, uh, like, but I, you know, I go, uh, because I'm, like, you know, kind of dreading it. But I've already started it. Um, Miguel wanted stairs, and he's right. It's a good idea to have stairs. But I mean, I, why don't you just make the stairs hard? Like, just, you don't have to make them quilted. Um, because then you have to texture it. So what? They're just They're just going to be, like, some mega scan simple thing and then well i would just do this the step like this quilted yeah so i only have to do this section and the main part of the floor um will not be quilted but if not what i'm cuz it's actually easier but what i'm saying is like but why why even do that like i understand it's easier but why even do that like why, yeah, why not just put a rug and then put uh, the handles? Something. A rug and the handles? Yeah, like the rails. Oh, yeah. I wasn't going to put it. Oh, man, I need to do rails. No, you don't have to, but that's my point is I don't think you have to do the, the floor quilted at all. Um, well, I'm not going to do the whole floor quilted. It's just going to be it's gonna be tiled, and there's going to be, like, rugs that you can move around. And I just thought it was easier to make this quilted because all I have to do is make this one step. Unless I could pull something from Mega Scans. And I don't have like um, a scan that I can just shove in there. And then if you can't get a scan shoved in there, the quality of like the model has to be done so well. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's why. Because I feel like it's harder to to make something like comparable to a scan from scratch that is like hard and worn. But yeah, we'll see. I'll figure that out. Um, but in any case, this is going to another section, so it's going to open up. Um, I don't know if the character is going to really visit this, but this is also planned to be modular. So whatever section I'm building here, it should just be able to replicate across. Uh, but the, it just gives you a feeling when you're when you're passing by, like if you have a shot, you know that it just feels really large. Um, so this is the last section I will be making, and um, the good thing is like most of the UVs are done, right? So it's I could just start. So there's not like a long UV process. These guys are not UV'd. Um, it'll take a little bit of time, but it's not so bad. And over here, you can see this wall I'm planning to block it. So, like, there's no, like, there's not a simple wall. Like, you could just, hey, wall. <laughs> right? It doesn't work that way. Um, I am basically using the sample, which I, I, I guess I didn't realize, like, that was actually in the Harry Potter movies. But it's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's a real location. Um, so I'm building something like this. And I'm trying to make this modular as possible as modular as possible so you can see this piece here is actually 
like this piece here, right? And then this way, you know, this will be UV and it'll be duplicated across. So, you know, I am trying to plan this out um, and that type of stuff. It's just really hard just to, to have like someone else. Now, one of the things I, I started doing and one of the troubles I have, um, I feel like um, the model in here doesn't look very good. It's really hard for me to tell exactly when I start getting close, like where is that corner? I have to really place this point and I really don't want to wobble all the way through. So I actually don't do it in this mode. I actually do it in the wireframe mode. Um, and the other thing that's tricky is that it triangulates all the the mesh. So it's actually kind of harder for me to find my edge loop. So there's a lot of like things um, that can be made much easier, but this is how I'm doing it. I basically look at it in wireframe and I turn the background dark. And then this way I'm just putting points. I'm literally just tracing it. Um, and I'm not trying to figure out what my model looks like because I really had a hard time just reading the surface of it. Uh, just the way the lighting looks is, is tricky. So this is what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. I don't know if you want to jump back to show some stuff. I can. So I already got that piece in there. So now I'm trying to put uh, some kind of plane here. Well, I think that hallway looks incredible. It makes whatever I'm working on look stupid. No, it doesn't. Um, you did that hive. It looks so cool. And I'm still here trying like my hardest to finish this. So I'm going to put uh, something like that. So I was testing out um, maybe having some kind of a light down here. So let's do a rectangle light. Uh, maybe we should say something. Yeah, we got quiet. Um, so I'm just like trying to get stuff done. <laughs> so even on the stream, like, yeah, I'm just going to keep working. I am pretty tired. Um, I know Miguel is probably also really tired. So in terms of like where we're at on like hours, it's um, like I went to sleep. Well, you know what? Actually, last night or the night became the morning, basically, kind of thing. I was like thinking, I'm just gonna keep working until the stream starts. So, which was, is madness. Yeah, but I've done that before. So, um, I don't know if I st stated that in any of the previous stream, but I do. I just go. I just. I could do this. I get this over with. Um, let's try to finish this wall, and I was like going. I can do this. I was trying to hype myself up. So I do have like these um, moments and it's like of insanity. It's 3 a.m. where you just get like uh, delusional of what you can get done. <laughs> uh, and sometimes sometimes it actually works. So it's a, it's like a delusional goal. But like I only can think that way at certain times, like when not when I first wake up, when I'm supposed to be more sharp. Um, it's usually when I'm really tired, I start thinking I could do things that really is not realistic. And sometimes it actually happens that I actually can achieve um, some kind of ridiculous goal. And I could not. 
uh, I was falling asleep at my chair, and I'm like, "Whoa, I'm getting old," because I never you're fall getting, asleep. You're getting you're getting old because uh, you're working till seven in the morning. Yeah, that's really old. No, I never fall asleep at my chair. Yeah, because you're not you you weren't working till seven o'clock in the morning. No, um, so I decided to try, and then um, I found myself very like ineffective and making really bad um, decisions. So basically, uh, I will work until I go, this is not effective anymore. It needs to, I need to rest because I am actually wasting time. And, you know, but I, I do have my crunch time where it's actually really effective. And even though that throws my schedule off, somehow it's like a weird thing. I don't know, you know, if it's something like you would call part of the creative process where you just work better at certain times um, of day. But I, I do, I am like a night owl person. But I was like, I can't do it. I got to go to bed. So I went to bed like at five. And I woke up much more sharp. But I still want to see if I can do it. <laughs> I need to do one of those nights. So right now I'm just trying to. Um, yeah, so here's Jacob Chi. Um, suffering equals art. And in my opinion, no commentary is needed. Seeing you guys work is very, very motivational and helps us learn stuff. Thank you for, for that. Oh, thank you for such a nice comment. Um, we have some people weighing in. I definitely work better at night. When I wake up at 4 p.m., my body is <laughs> You sound so nice when you thank people. You're, you sound, like, so sincere. I mean, I know I you're am. being sincere. I am sincere. No, but, like, when guys compliment, it's like, thanks, bro. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You sound all, like, sweet about it. Like well, guys I, are like, thanks, bro. I do think it's nice. I, I like to hear comments. I don't know. It's, no, it's nice, but yeah, just it's nice. I like I wish I could sound like that. My compliments would always be like my replies would be thanks, bro. Thanks, <laughs> thanks bro. It's just like yeah. a caveman. No, I I somehow work um better at night. Maybe it's just less distractions or um I feel like I go like it's like I call it the zone. You're I don't know. Is that a word? Being in the zone, it is a it's it is a, it's a statement, right? It's an eighty song about it for sure. The zone, danger zone, danger zone. Yeah. But that's different. I mean, in like the zone, as in like the zone of work. It's the same thing. Like when you're when you're a fighter pilot, the danger zone is the zone. Oh, is that the <laughs> is that what the of song course. is based on? Like a danger zone. Well, I don't know if the song is actually about fighter pilots, but that song <laughs> to me is always like Top Gun. So that's. That's what it is. So I'm going in here now, and I actually like how that feels much more. It feels more like a desolate wasteland, and it kind of fits it better. But I feel like now I need to have taller mountains in the far distance. So I'm just going to create a bunch of them and not try to get everything to fit into a single terrain. So keep these super simple. So you could see whoever was asking me about, like, do I use Houdini? Like, part of the reason why I don't use Houdini for this is, like, like look at this mountain node an erosion node the end like it's so freaking simple that uh i don't want to learn something so complicated just to get that i definitely don't need this mountain to be 50 million polygons so let me find the something like that is nice okay so that's good uh, normal build let's make sure we set this to one unit equals one meter. Let's call this mountain A. And let's save this. Now I think about it, like, just this is off topic, but those 80 songs were, like, really, they, they had some really motivational ones, huh? They're all super motivational. What's that one, like? What's the name of it? It's like taking it to the limit song. Yeah, take it to the limit. <laughs> was that was that like become? I feel like that was in a movie. Of course, it's Scarface. That's when he's collecting his 
his millions. Oh, I see. Taking it to the limit. He's and that song, like I cannot think about that song without thinking about drug cartels now. <laughs> so exporting out to Geo, this should move fairly quickly since there's such little nodes here. Um, but yeah, um, take it to the limit. Those 80 songs are the best. Yeah, I feel like maybe if I get tired at night, um, I don't really. To, you need to listen to that? Yeah, like I'll just put on one of those songs, like take it to the limit, Tran. Um, that sounds cool. I do like find myself as I get older, you know, becoming more self-aware how I work, knowing knowing myself more. And I know that um, I can hype myself into something, which is kind of a weird thing to... That you can? Yeah. I can tell myself, like, I can do this. And it's like this um, kind of ridiculous goal, like this, this whole building, this whole hallway is like ridiculous. And I hike myself, I'm like, I can do this. That's, a, that's not bad, though. No, it's not. But I think, like, you know, maybe I get tired, just play, like, an 80 songs, like, Ticket to the Limit. Just use my Spotify. I already have, like, all of those songs saved. <laughs> They're probably, oh, do you have, like, a playlist? Of course. That's all, like, 80s motivational? They're not motivational to me, but, yeah. To me, they... Because I, I don't know a lot about, um, even though I was born here, and I was like kind of ignorant about all that cultural stuff. Because I didn't grow up watching like that many movies. Okay, so let's save this. So this is the Badlands. This one's so, so weird. Um, So, cool thing with this, so I already saved this as Mountain A. Did I save this as Mountain A? I did. So now I could just go to Mountain A. Let's just change the seed. Come on, give me a completely different mountain. Mm. Let's, I'll, I'll put that. Um, Johnny Boy, crank it to the limit. <laughs> crank it to the limit. All right, so let's import that mountain. Um, Red Tooth, Frank Sinatra. That that's what gets you doing art. Um, what do I call it? Just give myself lofty goals to give me the adrenaline to go. Yeah, you gotta like set goals for yourself. Dark Crystal Palace. <laughs> yes, a little bit inspired by that for sure. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't think we're trying to hide it. I, like, not even a little bit. It's very different, though. Actually, when you actually look at the Dark Crystal Palace, um, because we, you know, I wanted to make sure that I didn't just rip this thing off. But uh, very different. Um, the Dark Crystal Palace has much more like random shapes just shoved into it. Uh, and I don't say that as a bad thing, it's just, it is actually very different. It's just, this kind of looks like the dark crystal um, palace in your memory, but when you actually go back and look at it, it's actually quite different. Yeah. I mean, you know, our font is definitely like, um, the logo for the Threadlings is definitely inspired by the dark crystal. Although some people are saying Thundercats, which is, I did look at it, but I really uh, was looking at the Dark Crystal one. I have Thundercats. I never got into, I never had them as a kid, but I have some now. I love Thundercats. I think I remember, I definitely remember watching them as a kid. Um, they have like an amazing intro. It's the greatest intro in all of animation. Yeah, like their animated intro is like, it really holds up. It's the problem with Thundercats is aesthetically, it just does not hold up to a live action version. 
No, like walking. Well, I was going to say walking cat people, but you have an avatar <laughs> and they're walking cat people. No, but it's not that. It's, it's they're all wearing leotards. Oh, that's that's the thing. They're so like, what what is that look with the leotards? It's uh, is that like it's straight up like fitness video. Yeah. Is that an 80s? Does that like feel like even before? No, that's 80s. I mean, I was a kid. I don't think I was concerned about fashion at all. Yeah, James says um, it's like 80s hair metal. It is. Uh, it's all of that. It's uh, 80s hair metal. It's um, it's all of that great stuff. <laughs> those those bands in the 80s were amazing. How you didn't just have to be like this incredible musician because you had to be freaking incredible. Those guys are some of the best musicians. But you had to be. You had to have perfect hair, and you had to be ridiculously handsome, or else you couldn't you couldn't be in the band. So damn. Those guys had it tough. They definitely had a lot of style. I just find it funny, like, you know how hard it is to be like a world class musician, and then on top of that, you have to be a. You have to have the look, and the, and the. You have to be like kind of cool. You have to be more than kind of cool. You have to be pretty cool. Super cool. All right, so that's way too low. This thing. Too blocky. Let's see what happens if I grab the um, the fold. Where are you, fold? This gives it a little bit more of a Vasquez rocks, maybe. There's a comment here. That's why Kiss painted their faces. Because um, they weren't good looking. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You're probably right. Johnny Boy, you worked on Thundercats. Look, Dev. <laughs> uh, and then another Thundercats. I was watching Thundercats last night. I used to watch re reruns and Tsunami. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty fresh uh, <laughs> to, to you. If you guys are looking at my window. I finally um, traced it. This new technique I have. I, it you like, can show, show, show it. Um, so this new technique that I'm doing, it's just, so now it's white. The white is actually the color of the cloth. Um, but that new technique, just turn it wireframe and just click, 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 <laughs> click until you get to the end is actually the most effective way. We do have um, David who did the moth texture and did the amazing job. He, um, we asked him to do the, the cloth version of the moth. So basically, there's a, a practice dummy that these threadlings use um, to practice fighting and doing their magic. And they've made their own like prop um, version of the moth, which is not as menacing and is much more cute. And it was a difficult assignment. I, I can show say. it. Yeah. It looks really good. Uh, it's probably... Uh, was a pain, but it looks great. Well, let me show it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see, it's the moth, but completely quilted. So this is what they use in the school <laughs> to test out, to practice their magic. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, he did an amazing job. He was probably tortured. <laughs> Not probably. He was absolutely <laughs> totally, totally tortured. tortured during during this process. I'm like, oh, <laughs> sorry. We broke the guy. Uh, yeah. Um, and he's really, he's a really, really good artist. Uh, we, and we, we broke him. Yeah. <laughs> so I. We're very proud of that. We're proud of him. We're proud of that. Um, but I do think it's only myself that can do the environments because I don't, you know, that this process is. Hellish. It's super hellish. And you, we will. You mean the modeling? Yeah, the modeling. The texturing. Um, we are getting help on it. And yeah, it's... we're getting help. 
uh, they're doing like from from Sasha and Liz. Um, they've started and it looks really amazing. They're doing an amazing job. Who's Sasha and Liz, Tran? Who's Sasha and Liz? Yeah, tell people. You're, you know, they, people don't know. Who <laughs> Sasha they are. and Liz uh, are Noman students. Uh, Liz is graduating soon. They're both graduating really soon, and they are like some of the top students at Noman. Um, I don't have their portfolio uh, on me or anything like that. I don't know if they have that. They're working on the real, but they are some of the best students that I've seen, and they really are amazing at texturing and well they're good at other stuff too but they are d definitely very super strong in that aspect and they are killing it on on this um the mauling stuff i i have to take on unless i unless we want to just burn people out um and we don't want to do that so that's why i'm i'm saying like i'll just do that because one we don't have design so if you don't have a design or something and we didn't have a design for for the moth that David did the cloth one it's you know obviously made much more difficult for that person because it's already so grueling to do it even with the design but then if you do all the work and then we're like nah that's not how we want it to look like oh yeah it's it's really rough um you know so we don't want to do that and that's why again I was I'll keep the modeling and then the texturing stuff I gotta clean up my files. It'll be passed on to um, other artists. So, what are you doing? Importing the mesh? So, um, I'm importing in these separate um, mountains to put in the background. Okay. on my small screen, cleaning up um, the pieces of cloth that were made. Um, so it makes everything easier later. What Thundercats looked at? Was it the Thundercats, the, the, the canned project from Digital Domain or, or the animated show? Well, that, I don't know how long it might take to answer that, but yeah. Um, yeah, so my thing is super tedious right now. Clean this up. Which one is that swirl? The reason why I'm cleaning it up is some of these patterns are super crooked. Um, and the issue with them, if they're crooked, is that it actually takes me longer to lay out a pattern. So if I draw like a certain shape, um, I can replicate it and duplicate it across. Uh, but if the pattern is crooked, it's the pattern starts to, well, if the base is crooked, everything starts to look crooked. I did not know there were two dots there. So it's just a simple cleanup, really. Okay, so that's that. You come over here. Okay, some boring stuff, but so you brought it in. It Im imports much faster than before, no? Like, I feel like it needs to take a long time to import and, like, turn it into nanite, and it's now, like, way faster than before. Yeah, possibly.
trying to get anyone look at my small screen if you're wondering what I'm doing. I am cleaning up. Which is tedious. I, I wish um, other things that would, if anyone's listening, um, and marvelous that would make this so much faster is improving their snap tool. Um, so the snap tool doesn't work very well. Like you can't uh, line up points. So um, when I have this piece, as you can see in my small screen, it's not a really big deal but it's like really crooked. And I want it to be like perfectly straight. I want 90 degrees lines um, and like 100, you know, truly straight lines, not a line that's slightly slanted. And that's where laying out pattern. Um, what happens is it can't snap. So I have to do this really uh, backward thing that I'm doing now which is I create a, a perfect shape that is perfectly straight, and I snap the points to that, and it's, it's kind of ridiculous to do that. Like Am it, I, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Sorry, go for it. No, it's just I wish they would fix that. That's like a, something that everyone I know complains about it. It like snaps to the wrong thing. But anyway, go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, there's um, a lot of things I would fix in Unreal, too. Yeah, but these are simple things that I don't, I don't think it's necessarily going to get fixed. But it would make everyone really happy. Well, I would get I would get this done like really fast, um, much faster. And then what I'm doing is I'm writing down the measurements. So I use like this the Epic Pen tool, and I get the lengths. And it's just a lot of extra work. But being faster at it. You know, it's just crazy, like I, how, manual some of this stuff uh, can be. Oh, you just did what, what you always accused me of doing. What, just not finish my thought? Yeah, yeah, or I just completely just turn off. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking about something else. No, I was just thinking what, what I was gonna say. Um, but you know, like 3D is still so manual. Like you can't, you don't really have like, um, like you have like AI art doing all this crazy stuff, but we still can't like, we don't really have like the best retopo tools. We have some kind of retopo tools, but retopo is still so manual. Yeah, if you would have told me that we would replace concept artists before we replace the ability to retopologize a, a vine, <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, that's just insanity. Yeah. It almost proves to you that it's it's we, you know, when they say a lot of these AI guys, when you actually talk to them, they tell you that they don't actually know how they don't know how it's doing it. Like they've taught it to learn and then it's kind of doing its own thing. Do, like they don't know how to do it. They didn't program what a face looks like. They didn't program. Uh, this is all, it's just figuring it out on its own. It kind of makes sense because um, it's, it's, it's just sci-fi. Like that, that's something we could do, but we can't replace um, UVs. Like that's insanity. Yeah. Not replace UVs, um, automate UVs. Yeah, like automate UVs. Like 
and I mean well done UVs. Like don't say, oh, you could press auto UV and then you get crap. <laughs> like crap, yeah. Yeah, or just everything would be done faster. And you know, we're we're definitely not like the whoa, I have like things shooting all over the place. Um, I can show this part. Uh, so this happens to me all the time, and it's like, this is why I wouldn't pass this fork to someone else, because it would just drive them insane. So I'm going to hit simulate, and, and then this starts to come off. Oh, no, now it's, like, totally fine. Okay. Yeah, it starts to have a life of its own. Like, it's doing, like, this, and it keeps moving, and I don't know why, um, but it was just shooting all over the place. That's not so bad. Okay, no, it's bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the cloth has lost its mind. And it's about to fall off. You guys just saw that. I don't know if you saw that, Miguel. No, I'm completely doing something else. Um, this happens. And then there's troubleshooting time. It's trying to figure out what, where it went wrong. And again, that's why I'm like, I can't give this to someone else to do. They'll lose their mind. They'll hate their life. Um, whenever that happens, it's definitely and usually is something was not sewn right. So then I have to go and check these stitches. And sometimes it's just like the stitch just went over the corner. Maybe it won't do it now. Or it just sometimes doesn't like whatever fabric it's supposed to be. But there's, you know, various reasons. You can also see, like, it's not, um, oh, it's not sewn down here. It's not holding the shape very well. So that's another thing to fix. Like, why is it kind of popping off? And it's waking out down here, too. It's like, no, <laughs> OK. Sometimes it works itself out. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, one of the things that I do is I try a different fabric property. Um, and I color code this so that I recognize that there are different fabric properties. So this one be just like a darker red unused lambskin, which is softer. So I have trim full grain leather, which is like one of the most firm um, pieces. And then maybe this will be better. Um, the other things that I can do. Uh, Marvelous Ghost doesn't want to be dressed right now. And then we had some comments on. I feel like this is because AR generous, easier to sell to people since it's targeted to everybody. There's a bigger market rather than making tool that only works for artists would buy. Yeah, it's completely that. Um, the people developing tools for like, for us aren't, they're just like completely different market. Okay, so let me try fixing this. So this is sliding off. What I can do is I can select um, a stitch, trying to figure out where that stitch is, like this one. And let's see, it's becoming very soft in the corner. So what I'll try to do is um, adjust the fold angle. And I learned this from Megan, um, who works at Marvelous. And by adjusting the fold angle, it just becomes a little bit sharper. And that helps it out. Uh, this one is still like lost its mind. Somehow, I've been having this problem lately, and it's happening on um, like really long pieces. It just, I think it just has issues with it. And I have to figure out how to fix that. So it's never. Sometimes, once in a while, it's like, oh, that came together. But most of the time, it's not. You just 
always going to have something that needs to be adjusted. And it's kind of madness, I would say. Um, you have a question. You guys be using um, Unreal? Yes. We will be rendering and lighting Unreal. And if you look at Miguel's screen, you can, well, he's in Maya, retopologizing. I'm not retopologizing. I'm creating um, a section that I want to test out to see if um, I could add more controlled, like gangly bits in certain areas. Ah, uh, okay. I'm trying to fix my my problem. I'm trying to get the cloth to like be sucked onto it. Um, another, yeah. Well, other issues is sometimes the cloth like falls through the mesh. <laughs> It just like keeps going through like, huh. Uh, you have a question. How'd you make the tendr tendrils on the tree? Um, I'll show you in a minute. Let me just get this into Unreal. So I showed this a few weeks ago. It's, um, it's, it's a plugin called Maya Labs. Uh, let me just bring this, let me just export this and I'll show you. Um, just export that out. Uh, so basically, if I create a shape, I could run Maya Labs, and it'll grow on it. So you can see it's there. Then if I go into the, pro the properties of this, I have all these settings. I have a bunch of presets already. So I could just do like, like this. Uh, while that's doing the up, there you go. You can see it already applied to it. And you can see it has gravity. So wherever it's at the bottom, it just starts dangling down. The size of it, of the object, plays a big role in, in the look of it. So this is probably too big. So what I would probably do is make it smaller, run that again. For all my presets. Um, you see that already looks way better. So using this now, I could then delete the history on it, put that into whatever object I want, and then scale it up to whatever size I, I need it to be. But that's basically it. So the, the Maya lab gives you Maybe a little too many settings, to be honest. Like it's um, one of the things that Unreal does that I wish Maya had is how you could just filter your search because there's so many properties in some of this stuff. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. And then you get your model and you can bring it in. So here I'm just trying to bring in um, the vines. So let's see. I still have my thing moving, it's fine. Uh, okay, why is it doing that?
Hundreds. So if I'm getting an issue like this, this usually means that one of the lights is interpenetrating with... Um, that looks kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, but this means that one of the lights is interpenetrating with one of the vines, so I just have to find it. Make sure it's not uh, interpenetrated. So there's a few things I need to figure out that are driving me crazy. So one of them you can see when you look at this area here, Focus on the light here, not the little lights, but just the light in general. As the camera zooms in, it completely changes. Do you see that, Tran? Yeah. Do it again. I actually don't see it right now. You see that? Do it again. Left side, look at this area here. Bottom left, that bottom bang or whatever. Look at, again, don't look at the little lights, look at the general lighting. Yeah, I am looking. Oh, it's disappearing. And it's, um, the fog is, is popping. I ha we had um, one pretty like large wide shot on, we had a couple of wide shots, but on the voice in the hall, and those were problems that I don't know. We just I don't know what I did. I just went. Like that. <laughs> um, no, like their their lighting like disappears at a certain distance, fades out, and then their atmosphere doesn't work the way you way like it w works pretty well. But I think when you get to like pretty large scenes, it's, um, it's not really like Z depth the way that it normally works um, in a regular render. It it is its own thing, I guess. That's how. I don't know how to explain how it really behaves, but it's not the same. Yeah. So anyway. That's the progress for the week. Floating castles, um, hallways, and what else, Tran? We, are, we got accepted into um, this writing program that we're using to help us actually refine the script that we're currently working on, which is it's a very cool writing program. It's um, created by uh, Dan Lin who's the producer of the movie It and the Lego movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's super cool. It's pretty awesome. Their, their campus is actually incredible. And it's, um, yeah, it's a huge opportunity for us. And the fact that we're in a writing program and we had to submit writing samples and we got accepted was pretty yeah, it was crazy. A big, it was a big deal for us. Because we... Becoming a writer was up there with becoming a Russian ballet dancer for me. It was basically at the bottom <laughs> of the freaking list. So the fact that we're in a writing program right now, what the hell is going on? Yeah. So weird. It is weird. Um, I feel excited to be in it. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. We're surrounded by writers. That like, only want to write. Yeah, like they're for real writers. That's what I call them for real writers. <laughs> and we're kind of like, I think we're kind of annoying because a lot of times we want to like, we want to explain something, we just show an image. And uh, they're like, we don't need pictures. I'm like. But you do. But you do. You need it on the thread. Like, <laughs> so 
So how do you yeah. know what we're talking about? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah. we're the annoying too. So we're annoying. Um, anyway, guys, that's it. We'll see you. Yeah, if I was going to go back to school, it would be right. Well, th this is actually what it feels like. It feels like we're back in school, but it's not. It's, um, you know, it's at a, at it's a, a really Yeah, it's big at company. writers who went to school. Already. Yeah. Um, From what I understand, Dan Lin was the one who was supposed to take over DC, uh, and he turned it down, and then they offered it to James Gunn. So Dan Lin is, like, pretty high up there. He's a prolific producer. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. He's big time. So it's really like awesome. Like what? I get to yeah, and they here. treat us amazing. They're really cool. They are the, some of the nicest people. Yeah. Um, so it's, and all the writers are, that we've met are like really nice too. Yeah. So anyway, this is going to take a while. As I said, this is all, there's no textures on anything here. So this is, that's the textures, all white and gray. So this is still needs a lot of work. Um, but we'll get there. It's going to look cool at the end. And um, we will see you guys next week. Yes, see you. Oh, wait, what else happened? We actually won a bunch of awards last, last weekend. Oh, all right. So we won at Film Quest for Best Animation. So that was awesome. And that's one of, my, one of my favorite festivals. So that was cool. But anyway, that's it. Thank you, guys. And um, we will see you in the future, follow us on Instagram, uh, Half Empty Studios, Half Miguel, Half Tran. And we will see you guys next, next week. week. Yes. Later, later. Bye, everyone.